G'day. I'm Ian Swain, the owner of Swain Destinations, and welcome to another episode of G'day with Ian Swain. My special guest today is someone whose conservation beliefs go way beyond most. I recall when I first met Aideen at a travel show and we sat down and Aideen told me how it all started. I was in awe. Jamalani today is recognized as one of South Africa's most respected five-star safari lodges. But the essence of Jabalani reaches far deeper than luxury and travel. It reflects an exceptional 20-year journey that began with a brave little elephant named Jabalani. Aideen Rood is the legend in South Africa for her loving care of elephants and wildlife. She was named Relaine Chateau's 2020 Woman of the Year. So welcome, Aideen. Thank you very much, Ian. Thanks for having me on, on your podcast as well. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm so excited to to share your knowledge and your experiences with our with our viewers and listeners. But first, congratulations on being named Relaine Chateau's 2020 Woman of the Year for your tireless dedication to wildlife conservation. What does this recognition, recognition what does this recognition mean to you and the Javalani's team's cause? I think it's it's really something that um, you know I couldn't have done it just on my own. It was really the team behind me, um, but it also motivated us, you know, a, a lot to be to be acknowledged for for what we're doing every day. Um, because sometimes you know you you get just like a really tunnel vision. You go you know just day after day, and just seeing it from somebody else's perspective that what you do is actually worthwhile and it's been recognized um you know it's actually humbling and um you know especially being a south african and receiving a worldwide um you know trophy like that it, it was really something very special for all of us and having the trophy you know in the in, in the lodge itself um it's you know just reminding us all that we, we must continue with what we do it's so well deserved, Aideen. I'm so happy for you and, and for the team. But tell us a little bit more about Jabalani. I mentioned that it started with one brave little elephant named Jabalani. But describe the um, elephant interaction of Jabalani that our clients experience as a result of all that. Okay, so going back into history, the um, baby elephant that you're referring to, Jabalani. Jabalani means happiness. Um, he arrived 23 years ago, and um, we were able to hand raise him with my mother. We also had a full-time veterinarian at that stage, uh, Dr. Rogers, who played a major role um, in, his, in his care. And then at the age of four, five years, we started, it was an 18 month period where we started trying to reintegrate him with the wild herd on the reserve. And um, because we are on a big five game reserve. However, Jabalone th think, and I think he still thinks that, um, that he's more human, you know, and he chased away the wild elephants, but they were also not a matriarch that were able to take him in. So unfortunately, our um, reintegration period uh, program that we followed were not successful at that stage and then in 2002 there was um with the um all veterans in zimbabwe that took over the farms um and the reserves there were elephants that were all hand raised and the farmer had to leave um his his um farm and the elephants were in danger because you know the war veterans had in, uh, invaded the farm so my mother took two trucks up, brought the elephants down um, to us on the reserve. And the good news was then that Jabalani had a family. Um, there was a, a cow and they were all very young still, but the one cow took him in. And she's actually still to this day, the Matri Hoch. Um, and she, by taking you know, her trunk over his um, head into his mouth and you know, accepting him, and that was kind of the, the start, but at that stage, my dad was still alive and he was providing us, um, you know, between my mother and myself with uh, the financial backing. However, without him around, uh, we had to look at different options in order to sustain the herd of elephants uh, because elephants do live 60 years. And um, that was the beginning then of the lodge that we built. So... Basically, you know, to, to look after these elephants is, it's, it's a major um, responsibility that we have. And 
um, you know, you can't take it up lightly. So it has to be sustainable in the long run. So the experiences that we also then offer to the guest and um, being very respectful and, um, you know, you're able to do bushwalks and the, the carers that look after the elephants will meet your guests. They will explain more about the elephants and about their personalities. You will always see, you know, they, they do uh, uh, browse into a very broad and a vast area on the reserve. So you'll get the females with the calves, um, you know, in the, in the same area, and then the bulls will be spread out. So it's very interesting as well to see the hierarchy, um, you know, of, of the elephants. So you'll be with your game ranger, and the program of the lodge is also very flexible. It's not very fixed in time sets. So um, you have the choice, um, you know, with your guests, do they want to go for a bushwalk um, plus a game drive? They can do both, they can do either. It's really up to what the guests would like. Um, and also in the mornings, if they would like to sleep in, they're more than welcome and we can go on a game drive a bit later on. But still around, sorry, back to your elephant experiences, just watching the elephant swim during the middle of the day. It, it is amazing, you know, just to see them. Um, sometimes, you know, um, there are uh, some of the females that don't like swimming, but they will go and they will play in the mud and wallow there, do some uh, sand bath. And then you get others that they just love the water um, and just playing, um, uh, you know, among each other. Sometimes the little babies don't go in from the beginning into the water and then slowly um, they will also join the herd and then the Matuhawk will also go with them. Um, and the younger um, uh, females. So it's actually amazing just to, to, to spend some time, you know, from your vehicle, but get so close to the elephants. Um, and then also, you know, just you're able to, to meet some of our ambassadors, um, we also, one of our elephants are um, the Amarula elephant, which are very well known um, drink in South Africa. And um, he's an, an amazing, beautiful bull. He's 34 years at the moment. Um, and then our youngest little one is um, eight months. And the history of the, of the, of the camp is, is wonderful and, and what you've done. And, and the mention of Amarillo brings a smile to my face. I've had many a nice Amarillo on a safari drive uh, in, the, uh, in the sundown of them. But now I'll know to come and look for the, um, the, the matriarch of, of that, the patriarch of, of the Amarillo drink. From your perspective, Aideen, explain to, to us the importance of conservation and how Jabalani plays a role in the conservation. And also maybe talk a little about your new initiative, The Herd, the Hoodsford Elephant Rehabilitation Development Program, which you started just last year. Okay, so, you know, looking at, at conservation, um, you know, I always explain to people that I would not be able to, to save the elephant species um, because I do it on a very small scale. Um, but giving the opportunity where elephant and human conflict um, does happen and is actually unfortunately increasing, um, increasing over Africa, but also now in South Africa. And having a safe place for little orphans that's been part of an elephant human conflict, um, to give them a second choice where man has actually created it. And um, so the, the Jobulani herd makes it an amazing opportunity for these little youngsters to be accepted in an elephant herd um, environment. So also just, you know, you get the hierarchy with the martyr and you do have juveniles and also the allo mothers that plays a huge role. So they also actually assist me from taking in elephant orphans. And over the last five years, I've seen a huge increase in elephant orphans needing assistance. And I had to just relook at where I am, you know, with um, the Jabalani herd and what I can contribute in that regard. And I started then um, and set up herd. So that is the Hoodspread Elephant Rehabilitation and Development, um, which is also then, um, you know, it's separate from the lodge activities because we're taking the elephant orphans. Um, unfortunately, you know, there's no contact with any 
elephant orphans from a guest perspective. However, they are able to see the little ones, you know, once they're out to play um, during the day in the water hole. Um, but it does um, help the, the, the elephants, you know, for the long run in a reintegration and a rewilding program. For elephants, you look at a social structure and a, a hierarchy, which is part of elephants, you know, they, they want their family, that plays a role. Also just looking at their lifespan of 60 years. Um, it is a it, it is a long program. It's not as easy, you know, just to say, even for me, um, having now 16 elephants is, I'm going to release them. Okay, who do I choose? You know, you stay, you go. Um, you, you need to do a lot of research in how the group structure is. So at the moment, um, I can speculate um, how my group will split in the future, but it's not set in stone. Uh, once there are enough elephants, I would be able to, um, you, you know, uh, re, uh, um, how do, can I say that? But to move elephants into a different area and reintegrate them. But unfortunately, at the moment, I can't just release them because they, they're used to humans and because of their size. Um, they are a potential problem. Um, you know, we game vehicles, especially in South Africa, where we're sitting with um, reserves and areas that um, is very tourist, um, you know, involved, of tourism is involved. And people would not know that this was an elephant that, is part of a, a rehabilitation program and you know for tourists and your game ranges it's amazing sighting if they can be close to an elephant but when you're busy with a rewilding program you actually need to break the bond between elephant and human and then you would not be successful so that is where you l then look at areas to reintegrate elephants will not have a dense tourist um, activities. So that is only, you know, once in the future, but I'm already starting with negotiations and looking at other reserves, you know, where I will, um, you know, ut that I will utilize and work with in order to reintegrate them. So from a conservation perspective, um, it's really offering a second um, a chance for elephants um, in, at this stage, but you know, in helping your uh, Department of Environmental Affairs and your um, authority um, and you know, like the Kruger Park, we've got one from uh, Pumalanga Parks to assist them. Where um, the the latest um, elephant orphan was um, found in a snare, so she had very severe this snare, and a snare is basically um, a wire that is you know like um in and around um and they, they basically goes through um around your neck and um like hanging you know on a tree then and they suffocate so this little elephant uh, broke loose um in a way but the the snare went through her um, mouth and it cut very deeply into her um uh um, cheeks and also cut off one piece of her ear behind her um, neck as well so um, when she arrived she was for about six days without you know any mother's milk or water or food um, I don't know the conditions but then also all these uh, wounds that that she came with um, so also with elephants you know they or they need family they need other elephants as well but also your carers need to be consistent. You need to have enough carers, um, but also not too many carers. Um, so it's a very fine balance between human and animals that, that you do allow um, around these little ones. Um, and then they also get you know 24 hour care with two hour milk feeds. Um, our, our little one now has been had a bit of uh, diarrhea. It can be the cause um, of teething and um, we test for all bacterial um, you know diseases what, what's the cause and at the end we also did even a blood transfusion so we had a, one of the the bulls um, that had a um, wound in his mouth because he and one of the other bulls played a bit too rough and um, you know so 
while we treated him, we just took some blood from him that we could do the blood uh, transfusion to the little one. There's a lot of energy and things behind scenes, you know, that goes into the orphanage. But also with the assistance of the bigger elephants, it really assists me a lot. Um, so we also uh, started with the introduction program of the little one into um, the bigger herd now during the whole lockdown process. Uh, because it gave me an opportunity while I, I was able to, to spend the time here. So I've been here now for nearly three months. And every day it was a little bit more of an introduction um, and getting the little one known with, you know, bigger elephants again and ones that's not really part of her family. So I started actually with bringing in just Jabulani as a main figure for her just to connect and um, then my second choice was um, the, the second in command, not the matriarch, uh, but the second in command to bring her in. And uh, it, it, next one was actually a very low, high racky female that I brought in. And just the reason why I, I decided on, you know, not bringing in your matriarch, is because the matriarch has uh, quite a few um, orphans already that she accepted. But to strengthen also your 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 younger females and um, and even older ones with the ability to um, so once we're able to um, you know split the group into natural um, selection, you don't have just a matriarch and a lot of um, little ones attached to her, but that is also evenly spread. Um, so for your social um wellness um, and then once again also for this the the, the wellness um, for the elephants it is amazing to see how they accept the little ones and each one is different um, even the bulls how they come and they smell and you know accepting her um, i have to say I'm, I'm quite humbled with the whole last three months that you know i, I spent so close to them and also working with such an amazing team um, on the ground, but also as advisors, you know, being able to, to send people that's been studying elephants, that's elephant behavior specialists, be able to send them information and clips and, you know, just ask them advice and say, listen, this is what happened. What do you think, you know, um, should I do this? How do you, you know, go about, so even in lockdown, because they know the elephants and also the system and the setup down here, and they were able to, to assist me with advice um, during this system. But sorry, Ian, I think I totally lost your question. No, <laughs> <Just by laughs> no your, your knowledge of <laughs> elephants sorry. is amazing. And I was going to say a comment, you are one, you are one with the elephant. Um, and, and I'm sure that you're the biggest resource, research resource that people look for when they're, when they're looking at conservation and elephants. But one question I brought up when you were talking about that, of, of the elephants and, and humans, if there was one attribute that elephants have that we don't have, as humans don't have or don't utilize, what would that be? I actually want to say um, maybe maybe kindness to each other, but also sometimes with a discipline, but um, there's no hard feelings, you know, after that. Um, I think, I, you know, I've, I'm learning so much from them. They teach me every day, but I, just that humbleness. Um, and forgiveness sounds like forgiveness as well. Yes. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> uh, just to switch for a second, Aideen, um, can you elaborate a little bit of the lodge experience that, that our clients have while with you? I know they have a wonderful time when they come back. When they come back, they tell us how inspiring it was as for the, from the elephants and from the game drives. But the lodge itself, you have the main lodge, you have the suites, and you have the exclusive Zingonga Villa, which is ideal for families. Can you just tell us a little bit more about the experience that I guess we'll have when they're there? Okay. So um, basically, you know, for, for guests that that coming out, um, we only have six suites. So it's a really very uh, small lot, very intimate. And um, we also have then the villa, which focuses on families or a small group traveling together. And this Ndoga villa can take from six maximum of nine people. But even then for bigger families, you are able to use some of the suites. Um, you know, that's close by to the, to the villa, if it's extended families. 
Um, but the villa can also be operational totally on its own. So Zindoga actually means on its own um, because it's also named after one of the babies that was born um, one night and the mother gave birth um, on her own. So that's just, you know, the synergy. And um, so that's completely um, operational on its own. With the villa, you'll have your own dedicated chef, your game drive vehicle, your ranger and your butler. Uh, which you will have access to 24 to 7, especially for people with smaller children. You know, um, they would want to go on game drafts at any time. It's available with their ranger, but they can also, the ranger uh, can take the children. If mom and dad would like to just stay behind, you know, for a spa treatment, we do have a, a program um, that's focusing for, on the children activities. But then also in the main lodge with only the six suites, um, we we do um, uh, um, offer, for example, every night a different venue for um, your dinner experience. We do the uh, like the wine cellar, which is more um, intimate. Um, you'll have your tasting menu as well. And I have to say, the cuisine is amazing. Um, I do miss the chefs a lot. Um, you know, just with what they they come up and um, they will also come out and meet with the guests. They will go through their menu and should the guest would like, you know, something else or something added or a combination of what is offered, um, they can do so. So it's very much, I want to say also, um, I think it's, uh, you know, very much a family experience, um, you know, from our side as well. Um, it's, it's a very warm family uh, because it's also, you know, run by the, by the family and also the staff been with us for, for so many years. Um, I think they, they you know, they, they saw my children growing up in front of them and I think maybe they saw me growing up in front of them as well. Um, so it's, it's a very warm feeling, I think, once you stay at Jabalani. And then also just on your game drive experiences, once again, it is a big five game reserve. Um, we, our our um, game viewing experience are amazing. You know, we've got the biggest dense um, population of um, pangolins on the, the reserve as well. And we've got about 28 different pangolins. Um, and then wild dogs, um, to be honest, I actually saw yesterday, um, once again, one of the, you know, a group of wild dogs, that's five um, in, in the pack, but we also have a bigger um, group, you know, coming past. Um, so your game viewing is really amazing, but you do have the opportunity to go even on three game drives. As I said, it is very flexible, your program. Um, but then just, so, so, sorry, from the lodge experience again, uh, we do have your Boma dinners, um, your, as I mentioned, your wine cellar, as well as your bush dinners, um, which is amazing. Your bush dinners is, you know, you don't expect that. Um, but then if the weather is not permitting, we do have the dining room as an option again. Um, we do, you know, private dinners as well, setups, um, you know, for honeymooners. Um, you also are able, if you'd like, you know, to, uh, we are only taking um, four to six people on a game drive vehicle. But if you're only two and you'd like to do a private game, um, uh, you know, vehicle, you do have the option as well. You touched on family travel there a little bit, Aideen, and um, we do a lot of multi-generational family travel. And I know that we've had clients or families that have actually booked a Jabalani as a sole use and taken every suite uh, because there was enough of them to do that and it made for an incredible experience. But what special activities do you also have available for the children who do visit? I think for, for, for the children, um, you know, we also... Um, you know, focusing a lot on, on the wildlife, your spoor tracking, um, uh, yes, your tracking, but also the visit to the Endangered Species Centre, where you, they can learn more about other species and why is a centre like that important. Um, but also, you know, if you've got crafting, you, you can spend some time with the, um, the chef as well, baking cookies. So it also depends on what your ages are for, for the children. Um, I mean, your teenagers, um, you know, we'd have a, a different uh, mindset, so we do have some archery as well, um, uh, but it's very much outside. Um, it's, we do have one television, which is communal, um, but it's really to be out and about. Um, I mean, I, I, 
I used to bring always the children um, from the city, you know, with my kids back here. And, um, you know, they will go out very early. You start early in the mornings. But I have to say that early evenings again, they are so tired that they just want to go to bed. So the mothers always said to me, wow, what do you do with the children? Because they come back and, you know, they're healthy and they, um, they just had a brilliant time, you know. And, but I really, you know, they, they kept busy, but with outside um, you know, really amazing stuff and basic, basically back to basics again with being in nature uh, and bushwalks. I think for any anyone that does have children, um, you know, sometimes it's not the easiest to to get them to do something that they don't want to. Um, but here, I think they get so involved in, in what's around them. And that they just participate and, you know, they really just enjoy what they, what, you know, is coming up. Community or the local community is very important to all the African lodges and camps uh, that are there. And uh, the importance is so strong. I'm just finding there's a lot of great stories coming out of the local communities during this lockdown of things that have changed and you just mentioned getting back to basics for, for families. And I think that's happening over here with, during our lockdown. But do there any, any positive stories you can share with us that relate to the Javalani community that you've seen happen that would be worthwhile sharing? I have to say, you know, um, with, with lockdown as well, I think we were a little bit different. Um, you know, the, the lodge um, staff, you know, could go home. But with the elephants, we had every day continued. Um, so we were very limited with the people that were able to, to stay behind with us. And they actually became, you know, they're part of my family. Um, because that's the people that I've spent the last three months with, um, you know, from, um, you know, sharing these stories from their homes. There's a lot of people that um, also can't go home because it was just, you know, too far. But now they have to assist over a WhatsApp with homework, with um, things like that. And, you know, if, if, if I look back from uh, you know, my school days, you know, with, um, you know, limited internet and now how you, you know, from our side, how, how you help, you know, on, on a WhatsApp and via internet and setting up Zoom, you know, to assist your communities and your, your children that, you know, not with their parents because they're actually helping out here. They're helping out, you know, us with the elephants and, um, you know, lo looking after what, you know, what is important. And, you know, without them, I don't know what I would have done. Um, you know, so, you know, everyone, you know, you, you know them by name, you know their families, you know their sizes, you know what's happening there. Um, and, you know, the, the stories out there, um, there's, you know. so, there's so many silver linings out of everything that happens and it sounds like that you're encompassing a lot of them and, and getting people back to basics and back to what's important which is nature and and I, I love the fact that elephants are forgiving and forgiveness I think is a very important part of life that many of us have to get more involved in but just to close so a visit from my perspective a visit to Jabalani Safari not only affords great food superb accommodation, stunning game drives and education about conservation, but it enables the traveler to become part of Nadine and her team's family and their cause. And I think that's terribly important. And listening to you today, Nadine, it's just been wonderful to experience um, all your experiences together. So I appreciate the time. It's certainly inspired me to come back and visit. And I'm sure it's inspired everybody on the call to wanting to come down and visit and experience Jabalani for themselves. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ian, and thanks for having me. And please come and visit and see what we do right. and what we've been doing out here <laughs> during lockdown. <laughs> I'd love to. I'll be over there as soon as we, as soon as the governments allow us to do that, we'll be there. Otherwise, follow us on, on social media, especially Herd. You can follow what we do every day with the elephants. Um, and I, I think, you know, even with this little one, Vina Albino, and, you know, going through so much... Um, you know, uh, things that wasn't great to her and how it's ending now for her and being allowed right. to get back 
to your family. That's wonderful. I really appreciate everything you do. Thank you very much, Aideen. Thanks, Ian. Thanks for having me and sharing my stories. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye bye.